before it's too late. The biggest threat is deforestation, plain and simple. Whether it be like on the East Coast for slash and burn ag agriculture, um, planting of hill rice, whether it be for burning pasture land for cattle so that you get a good green growth on the new growth on the grass that the cattle like to eat, uh, whether it be cutting trees for making charcoal. Uh, all of these are, are serious problems and compared to hunting, compared to, to any other problem here, environmental problem here, deforestation is by far and away the most serious. And the biggest cause of deforestation, apart from logging, is the need for rice. It's estimated that on average, an adult eats one kilo or 2.2 pounds of rice per day. And that's a lot of rice. And that demand for rice is going to increase dramatically because the human population of Madagascar is expected to double by the year 2020. Which means the demand for rice in Madagascar is going to skyrocket and the country's low fertility soil just can't stand that increase. So more forest will be threatened. Almost half the population of Madagascar are under 18, so the population's really booming, and need more food, cutting down more rainforest to provide um, rice paddies and grazing for cattle. Dr Frankie Kerridge works at Ranamafana National Park, another major conservation project. Run by Dr Patricia Wright from the New York State University, Dr Kerridge works with some of the most critically endangered species in Madagascar the greater bamboo lemur and the golden bamboo lemur. The golden bamboo lemur was only discovered in 1986. It's believed only 1,000 of these gentle primates exist in the wild and again they are threatened by Madagascar's primitive slash and burn agriculture. The golden and greater bamboo lemurs are so rare they have been given the highest priority offered by the IUCN's Red List of Endangered Species. This means, come what may, this species has to be saved. That is why there is so much intense study into these animals' behaviour. And Dr Wright's researchers have found many interesting things. For example, the golden and greater bamboo lemurs' eating habits are unique. The bamboo lemurs eat only the giant bamboo, the bamboo creeper and the bamboo grass. And the greater bamboo lemur's diet is 98% the same, except it may also rarely eat other plants like the flowers of the traveller's palm. But the most remarkable thing discovered about both the golden and greater bamboo lemur is that they have a natural resistance to the deadly cyanide that's contained in these bamboo plants. Despite the fact he eats enough cyanide to kill you or me, this little fellow tucks into it like a child does chocolate, with as much effect. This is the pith of the giant bamboo. It's and a young juice. pith. It's very soft. And it's also very full of cyanide. Do you think this is where they get their water to? Um, I don't or know. Do they actually drink? It seems there is an enzyme in their gut that enables these little creatures to chomp on bamboo all day. The greater bamboo lemur was, uh, was known first from fossils before live specimens were found and, and it was thought to already be, be extinct. So anytime uh, any sort of discovery like that is made, it's really, really exciting. And hopefully there are more discoveries like that to be made here in Madagascar. Unlike its cousin, the golden bamboo lemur, which is confined to just two small reserves, the greater bamboo lemur ranges over 50 kilometers. But this is still tiny compared to its range a few hundred years ago when it would have been found right across Madagascar. These critically endangered species are really only afforded protection in national parks and reserves. Elsewhere, they are still hunted for food. If bamboo lemurs are to survive, this hunting has to be stopped. And the only way that can happen is for other areas of Madagascar to adopt a similar approach to conservation, and that means education. 
and that's an important part of the programmes that are here. All the international researchers that come here, each one has a Malagasy counterpart who may be a student or an assistant and then also they work with a guide who may have some training already but may get extra training or a training in a different area. With the local tribe here, the Tanala people, who are people of the forest, that's what the name means, um, it's been quite easy to educate them into conserving the forest and reducing pressures. And there are examples of this sort of thing happening elsewhere in Madagascar. Conservation organisations have realised that it is important to involve the local people in conserving their natural history, not to exploit it for food or by poaching it for wildlife smugglers. This class is being run by the Maswala National Park Authority. It's teaching its guides not only about the importance of their forest and wildlife, but the importance of ecotourism to their future. <laughs> 